Hey everybody, welcome to Chris's Daily Read Aloud, Magic Treehouse Edition. Today, we are reading chapters 9 and 10 of Magic Treehouse book number 11, Lions at Lunchtime by Mary Pope Osborne. If you'll recall, we just finished chapter 8 with Jack and Annie discovering the lions sleeping under the tree Magic Treehouse tree. Chapter 9, Tiptoe. Jack and Annie crouched in the tall grass. There was a big lion, three lionesses, and a bunch of cubs. I think they're sleeping, whispered Annie. Yeah, said Jack, but for how long? He pulled the Africa book from his pack and opened it. He found a picture of lions sleeping under a tree. He read in a whispery voice, After a pride of lions has eaten, they rest for a few hours. The other... What did they have for lunch, Annie? He's broken. Don't ask, said Jack. He kept reading. Sensing that the lions are not hunting at the moment, the other animals graze nearby. If they can graze, then we're safe, said Annie. She started to stand. Wait, Jack pulled her down. Not so fast. He peered around. The words in the book seemed true. The zebras and giraffes didn't seem to be bothered by the lions at all. They might be safe, but I'm not sure about us, said Jack. We need a plan. What if we wait till they leave, said Annie. That could take hours, said Jack. Plus, they might be hungry again by then. Oh, right, said Annie. So here's the plan. We tiptoe, said Jack. Tiptoe? Yeah. That's your whole plan, said Annie. Yeah, tiptoe to the rope ladder, said Jack. Very quietly. Good plan, Annie teased. Just do it, said Jack. He stood up slowly. Annie stood with him. They began tiptoeing through the grass. Slowly, the lion flicked his tail. Jack and Annie froze. When his tail was still again, they moved again. Suddenly, high-pitched laughter split the air. Jack and Annie stopped. The hyenas were back. They were standing off to the side, watching Jack and Annie. Jack and Annie made silent monster faces and shook their fists, but the hyenas only laughed some more. The big lion stirred lazily. He opened his golden eyes. Jack felt the hair rise on the back of his neck, but he didn't move an inch. The lion lifted his head and yawned. His giant teeth gleamed in the sunlight. The lion turned his head as he looked around sleepily. Jack held his breath as the lion's gaze rested on him. Jack's, the lion sat up straight. His piercing yellow eyes met Jack's. Jack's heart raced. His mind raced. He remembered something he'd read. Lions avoid giraffes. Jack looked around. There was a giraffe walking toward the tree that the magic treehouse was in. Suddenly, he had a new plan. Get under that giraffe, whispered, he whispered. Now you're the one who's nuts, Annie whispered back. But Jack grabbed her hand. He pulled her over to the giraffe and underneath it. The giraffe's legs were so long, Jack and Annie could stand up under it. Jack's head barely brushed the giraffe's golden belly. The tall creature froze for a few seconds. Then she moved slowly toward the tree. Jack and Annie walked in the same rhythm as the giraffe. They got closer and closer to the treehouse, and closer and closer to the pride of lions. The big lion stood up. He watched them moving under the giraffe. When the rope ladder was just a few feet away, Jack and Annie dashed out from under the giraffe to the rope ladder. Annie scrambled up first. Jack followed right behind her. They cl as they climbed, the lion growled and leapt at the ladder. The hyenas laughed. The Jack climbed faster than he'd ever climbed. He leapt after Annie into the treehouse. Annie had already unrolled the scroll. The riddle was gone. In its place was one shimmering word. Honey. Jack grabbed the Pennsylvania book. He opened it and found the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, he said. Just then, the giraffe stuck her head through the window. Bye, honey, said Annie. She kissed the giraffe on the nose. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. And everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10. After lunch, Jack opened his eyes. His heart was still racing. Hyena laughter ra still rang in his ears. We made it, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack, but it was very close. Jack looked, took another moment to calm down. Then he pulled the Africa book out of his pack and put it with the others. Annie put the scroll with the other two scrolls. The giraffe was the true honey on that trip, she said. Sweet and golden with danger all around it. Yep, said Jack. And now we just have one riddle to go. Yep, said Annie. Ready? Ready. She started down the ladder. Jack followed. When they hit the ground, they walked through the sunlit woods. It's time for lunch, said Jack. I'm full from our picnic, said Annie. Same here, said Jack. What do we tell Mom, said Annie. We say we ate our sandwiches coming back from the store, said Jack. What if she asks why, said Annie. Oh, just tell her we had a picnic with a Maasai warrior in Africa. Annie laughed. Right, she said, because we didn't want him to, we didn't want him to be mad at us for taking his honey. Right, said Jack. The honey from a beehive that honey guide led us to. Right, said Annie. And that happened after an elephant gave me a shower. And at right, and we scared off two hyenas. Right, said Jack. And after you fell into a mud hole because you were helping a million wildebeest migrate across the river. 
Right, said Annie. And all that was before a giraffe saved us from a lion. Right, said Jack. Jack and Annie left the woods and started up their sunny street. They were silent for a moment. Then Jack pushed his glasses into place. We better just say we ate our sandwiches on the way home from the store, he said. Right, said Annie. And if Mom asks why, started Jack. We'll just say it's a really long story, said Annie. Right, said Jack. With with like the ten chapter with like ten chapters. Annie laughed. Good plan, she said. Very good plan, said Jack. They crossed their yard, they went up their steps and through their front door. We're back, Annie shouted. Great, called their mom. Ready for lunch? Yummy peanut butter. The end. And that is the end of Magic Treehouse book number 11, Lions at Lunchtime. Come back next week and we're going to read book number 12, Polar Bears Past Bedtime. Hope you enjoyed the book. Hope you join us again next week and I hope everyone has a good day. Stay safe, wash your hands, and have fun everybody. Bye!